Okay, so we're going to start. So welcome everyone. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I am Julien Larsonner, so I am Senior Business Development Manager at Faitian Technologies. And uh, let me introduce you William Houri, which is uh, Vice President of Sales of Versaisec. So hi William, how are you? Hi Julien, I'm doing good, happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So, yes, so we will present you today uh, the VersaSec and Faitian FAD, FIDO and PKI technologies. So please understand that it will be live demos on mobiles and laptops. So it will be live remotely. So like we would do if we were at a trade show, but as we all know, it's, uh, it's difficult to travel right now. So uh, let's be, uh, be kind with us. We did our best to, to show you how we can uh, demo and how our keys are working together with our, with our joint solutions. So let's start with uh, Feitian introduction. So I'm going to just talk to you about Feitian and then William will just share about VersaSec and we'll start the joint demos and Feitian demos to, to end the webinar. So please understand also that there will be a, a survey in the end and feel free to, uh, to answer it. It helps us a lot to uh, improve our products very important and also if you have any questions uh, you, you have uh, questions and answers uh, that you can just click uh, during uh, the webinar and we'll be happy to, to answer and you can even contact us anytime because our contacts are in the end of this webinar so let's start so Feitian who we are so we were founded in 1998 we have more than 1,000 employees currently we have more than 1,000 patents worldwide. We have more than 2,000 customers worldwide. We, our team is composed of 500 R&D engineers, which is a lot, but you can understand it with our portfolio. And we deliver annually more than 80 million products. So the brief history of Feitian, we started with Rocky Software Protection Dongles, then we moved to the EPAS PKI identification dongles for digital signature. Then we launched the smart card based solutions. Then the one time passwords, so two factor authentication for online banking mainly. Then we launched the mobile version of this OTP. Then we launched the mobile point of sales for mobile payments. We got our initial public offering uh, in 2014. Uh, we are now listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Then we launched uh, just before 2015 the FIDO U2F, followed with OTP card. So it's a poor card concept, but you can see how we developed it after. Uh, we launched then the biometric uh, way to integrate the, the biometry in our tokens and also on our cards, like you can see on the fingerprint card. In 2018, we launched the FIDO 2 uh, passwordless security key based on the protocol of the FIDO Alliance. Then the DCVV card. So you can see the different technologies one can also put in the card right now in this timeline. Some of our customers right here. So to name a few, uh, we work with Microsoft, Google, Apple, Symantec, uh, some car manufacturers like Audi and Toyota, uh, famous brands like Adidas, and of course banks uh, such as Unicredit, JP Morgan, Banco Popular. Uh, other famous names are yeah, Rakuten, Seiko. Um, so these are just a few names, and uh, of course, it is not all our customers. Well, way more. So what is FIDO? FIDO is based on free and open standards uh, from the FIDO Alliance. So Feitian is a board member of the FIDO Alliance, and we actively participate to uh, the improvements of this protocol. And it is supported right now with the biggest tech companies in the world and more and more are joining the, the, the movement. So basically the FIDO um, is, is very convenient because you can just get the key uh, from a B2C point of view and a B2B point of view and you can integrate it in, uh, I would say, enterprise sphere uh, environment and also you can associate it with a private sphere on your Facebook or your Gmail. Uh, other services that are more uh, B2C and you can do it by yourself. So once you have the key, you go to the security settings and you enroll the key by yourself. And it's just a protocol that's gonna link 
the key to your account. So it means that there is no uh, process in the middle by design with the FIDO protocol to implement it on your site, which makes it very convenient for the deployment point of view. So why FIDO? Uh, so we hear in the news every day the breaches that are occurring and they are even bigger and they are attacking even uh, tech, cyber tech companies. And uh, of course, we don't know exactly uh, how the hackers uh, can reach uh, such level of uh, expertise, but what we know right now is uh, the, the passwords and static passwords are key to the hackers to enter in organizations or private sphere, digital private spheres. So you can see 81% of passwords are the root cause of data breaches. And 90 plus average employees has more than 90 online accounts. Uh, 90, on, 90 online accounts employees have that uh, right now, average. 73% uh, of passwords are reused. And uh, the average help desk labor cost for a single password reset is 70 US dollar. And you can see the cost of a key can be way less than that. There is 167 million daily malware attacks. So you can see all these numbers here, they speak for themselves. So the FIDO protocol enables you to not use any passwords, uh, I mean to bypass the password, to replace the static passwords with a key, meaning that uh, you don't have to type and you avoid the keyloggers and the phishing attacks. So this is extremely uh, strong and extremely convenient. So the benefits, so you don't need to remember passwords, no password resets, works with most devices, it's totally open standard and it's supported natively across browsers and platforms. So you can see Windows 10, Android, Google Chrome, Mozilla, Microsoft Edge, Apple Safari right now. So one key can be used for different apps, websites, and uh, most OTP options uh, available on the market. So if you use a biometry like we have in our portfolio, uh, it is used, uh, the biometric are used in a hash, as a hash on the secure element. And it mitigates data breaches. And you can see the biometric creates true passwordless login, meaning that sometimes the key is associated to a pin, but the pin is it's not a password. Uh, the pin is associated to the key. The password is associated to the service online. If you use a biometry, you bypass the pin related to the key which makes the experience totally true passwordless. And also if you lose the key, uh, the, your biometry will be required to, for the key to recognize you. So if you lose the key, it's less risky than not having the biometry. So the common use case is office employees, healthcare hospitals, distribution centers, stores, education, and on the road employees. So right now, since we are more on the remote desktop uh, and where most more and more, more and more employees are working uh, remotely, uh, having uh, a zero trust, let's say, um, a zero trust approach on security, like putting everybody on the same level uh, of access uh, of, of, the, of the information in the organization, providing a key to every single employee uh, strengthen the security so you can be a remote uh, you can be at the enterprise uh, the key would be required and it gives a lot of relief to the CTOs to have this equipment so in a nutshell you can see here our product line it's pretty complete you can see how broad it is uh, so you can see the connectivity on the left you can see USB type A USB type C Apple lightning NFC Bluetooth, low energy, fingerprint. We have door access uh, enabled uh, products. Uh, FIDO U2F protocol, FIDO2. We can add HOTP, TOTP, PIV for digital signature that we'll show you with VersaSec right after. And we also add some open PGP. So you can see in a nutshell all our keys here. They have a different pricing. so. You can see that the more complex they are, of course, the price uh, is, 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 uh, is increasing, but it depends on um, every, every value, uh, every data has different value in enterprise. So if you have privileged accounts, uh, you will tend to give them 
uh, a better key and uh, for lower uh, end uh, data to be protected, you can give them an entry price level key. So this is what Feitian uh, embraces here. It's a very diverse portfolio with different connectivity and also pricing because Feitian is willing to provide the keys to the maximum people. We are not in a niche market at Feitian. We've always been uh, willing to provide such devices to, to the masses. And this is, uh, this is our strategy. And you can see here how we, we embrace this strategy. So now we let William introducing the Tensasek solution. So you can go ahead, William. Let's go. Thank Thanks a lot, Julian. It was very instructive. So welcome again, everyone. So uh, as Julian said, my name is William Uri. I am in charge of uh, the worldwide sales for Versasec. And uh, the goal of my presentation today will be to explain how with this, how this CMS we can unlock the PKI capability of the fission tokens and why we should do that. So next, please. I will start by um, introducing our, uh, our mission. Well, in Versasec, our mission from the start has always been to help organization of all sizes to better manage their digital identities. And we do that by delivering a system to manage the secure two-factor authentication device, which enable our customer to increase their level of security, of course, by using strong authentication. And we develop and sell our identity and access management system to enterprise and government organization. Next, please. So if, if we look a little bit at the history of Versasec, so Versasec um, as, uh, is a Swedish company. It has been founded in 2007. It's Stockholm, Sweden. Um, first, we were focusing more on um, providing specific development services uh, in this uh, smart card, PKI, entity, and access management field. For, uh, for example, in 2008, we de delivered a secure mobile healthcare solution for the NHS in the UK. So we were deeply involved in the deployment of, uh, of uh, PKI, smart cards, secure device in general. And all this project taught us that there was a need for a new type of credential management system. So, uh, so based on the new standards that was available on the market at the time, we decided to invest and to develop our own CMS. Uh, so we started developing it in uh, 2009. Uh, the first version of the CMS was released in 2011. The first sale of the CMS came in 2012. And today we have been very successful because we have, been, we have more than 400 customers in more than 50 countries all over the world. Next, please. So the question is, uh, we saw the presentation from Julia uh, using FIDO2 with the fission token, which is great. Uh, so why do we need PKI? Why do we need to add PKI on top of this? Uh, the answer to this is that because PKI is the only standard with the market which allows to unlock all the following use case. It's not only about authentication, it's not only about strong two-factor authentication. It is, of course, authentication for Windows logon, for secure remote access, such as VPN, remote desktop services, uh, VDI. But on, on top of this, this is for website authentication also, but on top of this, we have access to digital signature. So qualified signature, uh, thanks to the token or the card. No, please come back. Thanks to the token or the cards, we of course two factors authentication, uh, the token plus a pin or the token plus a fingerprint. So we have access to document signatures, uh, email signature and encryption, and also file and disk encryption. So with only one device, you have access to all these use cases, which are supported by default by the operating system or the Windows operating system and all the application running into the system. As soon as you can configure the application to use certificate-based authentication, then you have access to this. Next, please. And the role of the CMS here is really to manage the authentication device for which its long life cycle. So let's, let's take an example. Let's say that I'm joining a company and the first thing uh, the security officer will have to do for me is to issue a token, a card, a virtual smart card. So he will have to um, assign it to me in my, uh, in my user directory. He will have to uh, encode 
the certificate to, co to connect to the PKI to so make sure that in my card, I will have the good certificate and related keys to perform the operation I'm supposed to perform. Uh, maybe to print the card graphically if it is a physical smart card, uh, maybe to encode the physical access card so that I can use it for door access also, um, assign a pin code or unroll and un fingerprint. And then I will be able to use my card on a daily basis to again, log on to my domain, encrypt my hard drive, uh, sign my email, and so on. Uh, and maybe after some time, uh, I will forget my pin code after some vacation, and then when I go back, I need to have a secure way to unlock it, whether this is uh, by handing it to the operator, or whether this is by phoning the app desk, or having a self-service portal. In the same way, maybe after uh, some time, a certificate will expire, and I need also to have a secure way to renew them. Um, and maybe after a few years, I will leave uh, the company and the HR department will need to have a, a, a way to make sure that all my credentials are revoked and I cannot access the company content anymore. So if you want that kind of the high level non-exhaustive summary about the responsibilities of the CMS is to make sure that the device is always in the state we want it to be and that all um, the systems that relies on the identities inside the device knows about this state. Next, please. And really, this XCMS streamlines all the aspects of the credential management by connecting easily to the full company's ecosystems. To, it will connect to the user directory, whether this is LDAP or Active Directory, to the database server, like a SQL server, to the mail server, if for example, uh, you want to assign a random pin code to the device and to send this value to the end user by email, or if you want to warn the end user that uh, his device is about to expire and it needs to renew them, event log for traceabilities. So PKI, most of the time in the enterprise context, Microsoft certificate services is used, but we also do support all the main PKI providers of, of the market. I mean, Prime key, DigiSign, Go by Sign, VeriSign, um, Unisort, um, the Entrust, Nexus, I mean, the list goes on. Uh, HSM also, I mean, by design, we don't require an HSM, but if there is an HSM, uh, to, to which is already available to um, store the PKI Mother key, then we can also rely on this HSM to store our master key. Our master key is used to diversify all the admin key or admin pin of all the cards to make sure that every single device has a unique admin key or admin pin and that only the CMS with two factors authentication can calculate this value. Uh, key archival, so this is in the context of encryption. Um, you know, the, the main value of secure PKI device is uh, that uh, it has a microprocessor, so the keys are generated by the device and the private key, which is used for the signature, will never leave the device so that it cannot be cloned. With encryption, we have to do a little bit differently because otherwise, if you lose your card, you cannot get access to your content anymore. So, that, so what we do is that we generate the keys outside the device and we import them securely into the device and we keep an archive of the keys securely in our database encrypted. That way, if you lo lose your token or if you uh, forget your token home, we can issue a replacement uh, token or, um, uh, or um, temporary one to you and you can still get access to your content. Operator interface, user service interface, so all the credentials. So I said, uh, uh, sometimes I say card because I'm used to say this, but it's not only card, obviously this is card, this is secure USB token, this is virtual smart card, this is Windows 04 business container. All of these are, can be treated as PKI devices, depending on what you want to achieve. RSDM capabilities, that's uh, remote security device management, that's centralized management of uh, the device, that's very uh, convenient uh, for virtual tokens. Uh, credential providers, that's uh, allowing uh, to load our user self-service capability from the login screen, from the Windows login screen. Identity provider, if you want to implement for your company user self-service, uh, then the main challenge you have is that, okay, how do I you authenticate my user? Well, we can delegate the authentication of the users to any authentication server which is compliant to OpenID Connect so that he can authenticate the user for us 
and we can allow the user self service operation. Physical access system, if this is in the convert badge uh, context and you want to use the smart card for both physical and logical access, we can connect to the door access system to make sure that both systems are in sync. Photo capture them if you want to do a photo of the employee to print it into the card afterwards. So card printers to, to, to finish. Of course, to print the card le, le, um, graphically with the layout you want, but also in the same process to encode the PKI part and the contactless part, the RFID part for door access. And because these printers have some loaders where you could put, for example, 100 cards in, we have some advanced batch mode capability where you can define an input file with the list of the users that need to have a device and you click execute and the CMS will coordinate to issue uh, all the cards. Next, please. And of course, this CMS has full support of all uh, the fashion uh, portfolio. I mean, all the fashion portfolio that supports the PKI capability. This can be the K27, the K44, the uh, F2000, uh, the K40, the K26, the K9, uh, or the ePass uh, PKI token. And we support both the legacy ePass 2003 PKI applet from fashion and the PIV applet from fashion also. Next, please. So if I want to recap the main advantages of, uh, of uh, the CMS, uh, the first one is that uh, the installation is very quick. I mean, if you stick to the standard use case, which is Windows log um, domain logon in, in a Windows environment, uh, it really takes minutes. Of course, if uh, you want to do self-service, you want to integrate to an HSM, um, if um, you, know, you uh, want to integrate to a specific PKI, of course, it's a project, but we have a very intuitive user interface to optimize the efficiencies. Uh, we are the CMS with the most wide number of devices integrated with high level of security. We are coming from security background with inverse SX, so security is definitely not an option for us. Our system is very scalable. We don't have any um, limitation uh, in terms of number of devices we manage. The system can be used to manage 50 devices and to manage 500,000 devices. You just have to size your servers accordingly. Cost efficient especially for small volume, we try to have uh, uh, a very attractive pricing model, which means that we don't have an entry point. Uh, fully integrated with multiple ecosystems, like I explained uh, earlier. Customizable and extendable. I mean, by default, you can, with the graphical interface of the CMS, you can customize the workflows. Um, you, we have also a set of API that can be used to also customize the workflows. And uh, in VersaSec, we are not against doing customization also to make sure that we will meet customers' requirements. And the last point being migration pass from other CMS, uh, we have the ability uh, to migrate uh, from, uh, from third party uh, CMS, such as Microsoft MIM, for example, to retrieve the database so that the customer can replace uh, the old Microsoft uh, CMS or other CMS, please do not hesitate to contact me for this, uh, with no downtime and without user uh, interaction, user operation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, William. That was uh, super clear and super complete. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we enter the live demo part. So this is a complete introduction slide here. So we're going to show you on, uh, on a Windows 10 surface, uh, Android, iOS. You can see our keys here uh, with NFC, Lightning, Type-C, Biometric, uh, Bluetooth low energy with fingerprint sensor. So we enter the demo part. So we will start with the laptop side on Windows. We're going to introduce our uh, K26, K9, K27, K33 and fingerprint card. And we'll start with the VersaSec uh, CMS demo, live demo. So we're going to show you uh, the domain join PC login. Uh, we're going to show you the VersaSec CMS certificate issuing, then the pin unlock, then a BitLocker disk encryption. So now our Beijing team uh, will show you uh, the demonstration. Uh, go ahead. So, okay, so if you look at so the efficient technology. Uh, screen please now so please click on it if it does not come by default we will see how to log on uh, to the workstation uh, using uh, the key 26 token so and we will log on using both um, uh, fingerprint and pin code so pretty easy we will just plug the token in 
enter the pin code. Swapping the fingerprints, and we are in. And now we are going to see on how we can use the user self uh, self service uh, capability of this XCMS to unlock the PKI capability of these tokens. So, please click on CJLO screen if it does not come by default. CJ, please share your screen. It's on, it's on, it's on, we can see it, yeah. I cannot, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I cannot see it myself. So we are following the issuing uh, smart card process here. Uh, so William is having a little issue. So CJ, please comment yourself then, if uh, it's in only me which uh, cannot see, that's not a big issue, but uh, please comment yourself then. Hello, okay, okay. now, from this process actually you are, you are looking at now is actually from the issuance part of the smart card. That means at the end user part, right, once they have the free hand uh, token with them, they can uh, plug it into the system, and then they can do issuance uh, of their own smart card. So the process is pretty simple. Once the user self-service um, software like you've seen in front of you now is being installed, user will be able to do the self-issuance. Um, the USS will be contacting the server to get the certificate and everything will be injected into the um, token. Now, as you can see now at your screen, user will be, once the token, once the token already got all the certificate and uh, the keys that, that's available, they'll be, they'll be requesting for user to key in their, to set their own pin over here. So I'm showing you over here, you are actually, the user is actually just doing, um, just keying in their own pin. Okay, so once it already fulfill the pin policies that's been set by the token, then you're good to go. Once everything is ticked over here, that means you already fulfilled the pin policy. Okay, thanks I'm a lot, CJ. I can I can see the screen now, so I okay, can cool. I can take over. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for this. Uh, so yeah, and in in this case, what is important to see is that of course all the configuration has been done in the back end. So in this case, we have configured uh, the uh, the the tokens with additional keys and certificate to provide to do encryption. But we could do it for all the use cases that I have shown earlier, document signing, mail signing, mail encryption. In this case, for this demo, we wanted to keep it short and we focused on encryption only. Uh, so with the same uh, v 6 CMS interface, of course, we can change the pin like CJ is uh, doing it here, but we could also potentially unlock it with calling an help desk and doing a challenge response or with also uh, online mode by having an authentication with a third party system uh, using OpenID Connect like I explained. So here we have done the pin change and we will be able to see uh, the next step is come how we are going to use this token for this encryption. In this case, we choose to use BitLocker, which is embedded by default with uh, Windows. We could use any third-party third -party software as soon as uh, this, can, this can use smart card authentication. It's pretty easy to configure in BitLocker. You, you just say, use my smart card uh, to, to, to access with a, file for, with a file for backup or to print the recovery key. Okay, so now we are going to start the encryption. And as you can see, that's a very fast and easy process. And that's it. Now our uh, disk is protected uh, by uh, smart card authentication, thanks to the efficient tokens, which means that if I want to access to my disk, I will have to insert my token and provide my pin code. So this is something that we add on top of, uh, of the FIDO2 technology with the PKI that can only be achieved by PKI. As I have said, it's not only encryption, it could be uh, document signatures, mail signatures, mail encryptions. I mean, all these use cases that are supported using PKI. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, William. Thank you, CJ. So that was it for the Versus XCMS demo with uh, our keys. So we go to the 
next step right now. We're going to show you, uh, so the biometric passwordless Microsoft Windows login via USB type A with our K27. Then we will show you the fingerprint enrollment uh, on Microsoft Windows. So you need to build uh, 1903 and uh, newest one uh, to perform this on the Windows 10 uh, operating system. Then we'll show you the biometric passwordless Microsoft Windows login with our fingerprint card through NFC and a contactless uh, smart card reader. So now I let our Beijing team to do the demonstration. So I invite you to click on the small camera to see uh, on a large screen. So you can see our K27, uh, which is our BioPass 502 K27 USB type A. So with a fingerprint sensor. So you can see how, to, how easy it is uh, to log in on, on Windows. So you just insert the key. The account uh, recognizes the key and then you are required to put your fingerprint and you're just in. You just you just logged in. You didn't enter any any pin or anything. Just your fingerprint, your key, and you're in. It's pretty comfortable and user friendly. Then for the fingerprint uh, enrollment, it's very easy. You go to the settings on Windows. You go to your accounts. Then you go to sign in options. Then you will have the options for your security key to manage it. Then you touch your security key to unlock it. Then you enter the pin. So for the first utilization, you use it, of course you do that the first time. And then once you've done it, you re-enter your fingerprint to manage the key. Then you put your fingerprints two to three times and you're all set. So you have just uh, unrolled a new fingerprint on your key and you can enroll until 10 fingerprints on each uh, biometric key of FATIAN. So that was it. You can see how fast it is. It's all built in and uh, there is nothing very uh, technical about it. Everything is user friendly. So now the next step will be uh, to, uh, with a contactless uh, card reader, with our fingerprint card, that you can see on the camera right now, our R502CL contactless card reader. As many enterprises have this such a setup, they have also a contact card reader, uh, especially when you have you use PKI cards. Uh, we can associate uh, the 502 uh, protocol with our fingerprint card. Since it's a gel card base, we can add different applets, of course. So right now you just put your fingerprint on the card and uh, the smart card reader will power the card that doesn't have any battery and power the card in the session. So you can see the account recognizes the card and the card will recognize your fingerprint. And by uh, NFC contactless, you will just log in this way. So with this fingerprint card, this fingerprint card can be used for payments, of course, uh, fingerprint payments uh, enabled cards and also physical access. Uh, so this is very convenient for enterprises to have one product that that fits all. Now I'm just going to reshare my screen. We're going to show you the next demo, which is Bluetooth low energy on Windows. So this is our K33 key here. You can see it is a Bluetooth low energy. It has an NFC. It has a type C a female port dock. It has a battery inside. So with this key, uh, you can recharge it uh, two hours and you can perform four authentication a day, four sessions for one month and a half. Uh, Bluetooth only if you, uh, if you uh, perform authentication through Bluetooth. Because if you perform authentication through NFC or with USB cable, you don't use the battery of the device. So it's very durable and it's not, uh, it's not a device that you have to recharge every day, of course. So now we'll let uh, my Beijing team uh, do the demonstration. Here we go. So now, you 
want to open the session on Windows, you want to log in. So I invite you to click on the camera again and you can see the key. So you have to press a button for the Bluetooth uh, and the pairing to occur with your laptop. Okay, so you can see the key is recognized. It invites you to put the fingerprint on it and you just log in. So it works as is. This is very fast. There is no lagging. It's very efficient. So that was the Bluetooth uh, low energy experience on uh, Windows with our RF18 keys. I'm gonna share again and go to the next step. So now we go to the mobile uh, mobile section. Uh, we will demo you under iOS and Android with a lightning port dog, with a type C, with a NFC, and also with Bluetooth. How to uh, interact with your smartphones on the go with a fake tank. So we will start uh, the live demo with our K44, which is IE pass uh, with lightning port dog and type C. You can see that uh, we're gonna show you under a uh, Fido hardware MFA, a Google account signing, so on Apple iOS with a lightning or dock. So now I let my Beijing team to perform the demo. Okay, so you can see the iPhone. So we share the screen of the iPhone. You can see what's going on in it. I invite you to click on the camera to see. So the K44 in hand, you want to log in on Google. So you open your account. You want to sign in. You select the account you want to sign in. So you can have this password uh, copied and pasted or uh, I would say automatically uh, entered. So you don't have to enter the password manually every time. And then it invites you to insert the key because as on the security settings, you have already registered yourself the key to your account. Now you just insert the key and you press the button and you perform the two-step verification. That was very fast. So this was the iOS scenario uh, under uh, with a lightning or duck. Now I'm going to show you the next step with uh, Android. I have some slides about it, just everything to be, to be clear. So now on Android, I'm going to show you different ways. It will be with a type C with our same key that you just saw, which is our K44. Then the K9 with the NFC, uh, NFC antenna of the K9. Then with our K13, it will be the Bluetooth low energy. So it will be Fido Hardware Multifactor Authentication with a Google account sign-in. Now I let my paging team perform the demo. Here we go. So you can see the screen again. So you want to perform a, a login under Google. You select your account. You want to sign in. Select your account. So, there's a password, it requires a key, so you will be invited to insert the key in your Android smartphone. And then you will be invited to sign in by pressing the button. So the FIDO uh, concept works with the button press uh, and also the proximity effect. We we'll see that with the NFC. So it shows that you're physically present at the moment of the session. And uh, by design, it, uh, it, it kills the phishing attacks uh, remote, uh, from remote people that would like to access your account while they're not physically present. So that was it with uh, type C. We just signed in. Now we're gonna show you with our K9 NFC enabled. So understand that the, the NFC is also a near field, it's a near field communication. So it works like as a button press because uh, the NFC has to be close, very close to the phone, meaning that you have a physical uh, proximity presence with, with the phone during the sign. So you select your account. 
same process. Dot password, and then the key is required. So you will be invited to place the key on the back of your phone. So you can see, uh, use your security key with NFC. Place it in the back. And you're in. So you perform the two-step verification, the Google with the NFC with our K9. And the last one, it will be with a Bluetooth low energy with our K13. So since the Bluetooth uh, has a range that is way uh, larger than, than, than the NFC, you still need to use a button press for security reason on the protocol to uh, prove uh, that you're physically present at the moment of cessation. So, of course, you pair the key first with, you can see the light blinking, uh, the key is paired with the smartphone. Then after you select the account you want to log in, So, and next step, you will select the way. You can pair another security key if you want. And then it verifies your security key and you press the button. It performs a two-step verification and you are just in. You're just logged in with Bluetooth. That was it. Um, so, thank you very much. I'm just gonna share the screen again. Okay, so you've seen all the range of connectivity that is right now available. So, I'd like to thank you. So, and thank you, William. Um, so, thank you, Julien. It was a pleasure to, to have you today to show the uh, scope for uh, PKI with our keys. This is very interesting for the audience for sure. And uh, also or what we can do with our keys. And uh, the, this range is uh, it's, uh, it's getting broader every day and it's, uh, it's, very, it's very, very nice to have you today. So you have our contact details here. I can see that some questions have been asked and we will, do, uh, we will answer them. And uh, we, will have, we also have a, a survey that will be uh, broadcasted to you right after. And uh, if you want to ask us any question after this webinar, feel free uh, to contact us in the um, mail address, even to call you, to call us. You can call us anytime. And uh, thank you very much. And we wish you a uh, uh, happy new year and a Merry Christmas. And <laughs> since we are getting close to the dates, and uh, and see you maybe I hope next year and uh, on trade shows and to meet you in person. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.